I'm going on another cross-country solo road trip from California to Florida. And of course I got Miss Kuma with me. She always travels with me on the road. That's the main reason why I go cross-country from Florida to California and back because I want to take my dog with me. Um, and I haven't taken her on the plane. I'm sure it'll be okay, but I just feel like I would get stressed out. I usually make this drive in five days. Um, you could probably make it in shorter, but I like to kind of take my time and make sure that I'm okay to drive each day um, without, you know, overdoing it. But this time, I'm going to take a little bit longer. I'm going to take about eight to nine days to make the drive because I wanted to stop by some places and see some sights and also stop by some cities to see my friends. So on this trip, I am going from Los Angeles to Phoenix then to Las Cruces, then to Roswell, New Mexico, then Waco, Texas, and then I go on to New Orleans, Louisiana, then Pensacola, and then finally Tampa. And so in Phoenix, I'm actually gonna be staying with a friend. She was kind enough to host this little party and we'll be cooking some Filipino food. And then after that, I'm going to Las Cruces. I wanted to learn a little bit more about Billy the Kid's history. Well, there's a couple spots in Old Messiah where you could see uh, where Billy the Kid was. And then around there, um, on my way to Roswell, which is my next stop, I'm gonna stop by Lincoln, Lincoln County. That's where the famous Lincoln County War happened. Uh, where Billy the Kid was involved, so I wanted to stop by and see that as well. And then I thought I would just stop by Roswell too because I've always heard of Roswell because it's the famous town where um, people saw, people claim to see a UFO crash there in the 1950s, so it's like this huge deal. And everything, basically everything is alien themed there. I also thought it'd be great to stop by there because their museums, their UFO museums are dog friendly, so I was like, oh, that's cool that I can take Kuma with me to these museums and explore together. And then after that, I'm going to Waco, Texas. I used to only associate Waco with the uh, cult that was um, televised in the, I think it was like the mid 90s. But now there is Chip and Joanna Gaines that live in Waco, Texas. They've been living there for years, but um, they have a show called Fixer Upper. They built this huge outdoor um, kind of like shopping area. Uh, which looks really nice. Then after that, I'm gonna be in New Orleans. I'm actually gonna stay in the French Quarter, so I hope I can drive okay in the area. I'm a little bit scared, but I think I'll be fine. Then I'm gonna be stopping by Pensacola. Um, it's only a three hour drive from New Orleans to Pensacola, but I wanted to stop in Pensacola because I have a lot of friends there. So yeah, so that's gonna be my journey. getting a little bit hungry and um, wanted to get something to eat but I wanted to wait until I cross the Arizona border which I'm at right now Arizona state line because gas is cheaper way cheaper um, in Arizona than California so I wanted to do you know two things at once or three things at once I wanted to get gas I wanted to eat pick up something to eat and also take Kuma out real quick and here it is exit one Ehrenberg Parker <laughs> So before this was another exit that had lots of food options and gas fuel options as well, but um, it was, you know, almost $5 a gallon, whereas here it's more than a dollar less. So yeah, I'll stop here and give Kuma a little break as well so she could stretch her legs. Okay, Miss Kuma, are you ready? Let's go. walk around here a little bit. She doesn't really do much except for find a good place to relieve herself and then she's like ready to go back in the car. Wow, since I had Filipino food. <laughs> Kuma is having fun, hanging out. I am feeling. 
feeling a bit tired this morning on my drive uh, to Las Cruces. I stayed up way longer than I expected last night, but it was a good time seeing all my high school friends. My friend Miracle hosted an awesome party at her wonderful house that I stayed at. And Kuma had a great time at, at Miracle's house as well. She was getting lots of attention from all my friends. So she's pretty wiped out in the back today. It was so great to see everybody, such a good time. Um, but I am feeling it a little bit today on my drive, just a bit hungover this morning. So my drive today is about five hours from Phoenix to Las Cruces and there I'm going to stay at Drury Inn and I wanted to kind of check out the sites where Billy the Kid is known for uh, in old Messia or not. Messia, I think it's Messia. I've been listening to the podcast on Billy the Kid and learning a little bit more about him. So I've been more interested in Billy the Kid and seeing his sights and Las Cruces is one of those sites. And then I'm also gonna meet up with another friend tonight and she used to go to the same high school as well in Japan. Cruises now, but um, I'm gonna stop by Whataburger first. Take the exit, then turn right onto South Main Street. And exit 142. Got my Whataburger. Mm, so good. I love their fries here. So I just ate some Whataburger and filled up some gas. Now I'm heading to the hotel. Ooh, I think I ate a little too much uh, fries from Whataburger. You've entered the parking lot for your destination. Okay, here we are, Drury Inn. Just gotta check in. All right, baby, ready to go check in? Let's go. So, uh, Drury Inn rooms are usually like this. It's um, very standard, but there is some a little bit of design they have here on the headboard, but um, very basic rooms, but pretty spacious for the most part. But yeah, I do love Drury Inn hotels because of the free dinner and breakfast. You get like three drinks and that's including cocktails and beer. All right, changed real quick. And uh, now I'm on my way to Messia. It's a historic site, old Messia. It's only a couple miles from Drury Inn Hotel. Um, there's a lot of hotels here, so from any hotel around here, it's about two miles. I believe it's pretty tiny. It's like a plaza, and um, the restaurant there is called La Posta de Misia. And uh, from what I've read, Billy the Kid ate there, and then he was jailed across the street, which is now a gift shop. So this is it, Misia. La Misia. There's like a little plaque there that has the description. I just want to take some pictures around here with Kuma. Oh, it is very cute. Look at these little buildings. That's the La Posta de la Mesilla. It smells good. Very quiet around here. It's like a Saturday at almost four. Billy the Kid gift shop. So this was the courthouse and jail. This building, which dates from 1850, once housed the capital of Arizona and New Mexico. Later, it was a courthouse in which Billy the Kid was tried and sentenced to hang. So this is the gift shop here, and that is the restaurant across the street. It's cute in there. So yeah, we've been kind of walking around and reading these little plaques of uh, history information. Located in one of the most historic buildings in the town of Mesilla, the cantina has been operated continuously by direct descendants of the legendary Colonel Albert Jennings. So this has been here since mid 1800s. And I think a lot of these buildings have been here since the mid 1800s. And there's like another one across the street over there. So this brick building apparently is the oldest documented brick building in New Mexico. Oh, there's a bookstore over there. You wanna go check out the bookstore? Let's go. It looks like, you know, the town is kind of shutting down. 
Uh, looks like they have some kind of marketplace here. This bookstore looks interesting. Looks really cool in there. But I don't think I could take one. No, come on. I'm not sure where dogs are allowed here. Free wine tasting here. Hi, sweetie. Say hello. Hi there. <laughs> <laughs> That was a cute little town, uh, village or plaza as they call it. It's very, very tiny, but seeing the old adobe buildings was really neat. Very New Mexico. Um, it's cool to walk where Billy the Kid walked. But yeah, I couldn't go into any of the stores because um, I have Kuma. So just kind of walked around outside and looked at all the historic buildings around here. The restaurant over there, the La Posta de Mesea, is very popular. I have heard it's really neat inside, um, but I won't be doing that this time. Maybe when I come back with candy or something, I can go check it out on the inside. at the visitor center and I didn't realize that this area was at 7,500 feet elevation and I see snow <laughs> on the sides. Um, it's not on the road, but if you come in like shaded areas, you do see white a little bit, which is the snow. And then on the sides of the road, there's snow. Oh my gosh. I didn't think I would come across snow. <laughs> So yeah, I'm just being really careful driving here. All right, it's coming up on the left. Here. Yep. Take a picture with Billy the Kid here. Official scenic historic marker. The name of the community was changed to Lincoln when Lincoln County was created in 1869. So, not much around here. Up there is this. Oh, visitor information. I guess I'll go check it out real quick. Just parked on the side right there. There's like really no other cars here. <laughs> and the few other cars that I've seen are owned by people that live here. All right, so this is the Tunstall Store Museum, but it is closed, so I cannot go in. Uh, there is a US post office right next to it, and it's for real. Like I just saw a lady pick up some mail there. Very tiny and very cute. This is the store started by J.H. Tunstall and McSween, the lawyer. This is the site of the McSween home where that famous five-day Lincoln County War happened. And this is where Billy the Kid was involved and him and the regulators were here somewhere. There was a house and it got burnt down in the war. And that across the street is the old Lincoln County house also Murphy's General Store or Headquarters. I really enjoyed the Lincoln Historic Site. I thought it was super cool to see what Billy the Kid and the Regulators and Murphy and & Co and all those people went through 
and to see the sites, you know, that where all the action took place, where I've been learning about and hearing about, it was so neat to see. The last museum I went to, where Murphy & Co. used to be, that was really neat to see because the floors there are actually still original. So from like the 1800s, those floors have not been changed. They wanted to uh, keep that. It was also neat to see the steps of how Billy the Kid escaped that place because that's where Pat Garrett took Billy the Kid and had him stay up in a room and was watching over him. So yeah, just to be in that building where Billy the Kid was, was so cool. I wish I could have stayed a little bit longer and um, looked at some stuff, but I also have to go to Roswell today. So it takes about an hour to get there and I still want to do things there. So I'm trying to uh, get there as soon as possible. And I think I only have like a couple hours to do stuff there now, but I think the main thing is the UFO museum and Kuma can go in that museum with me. In about five minutes, I'll be entering Roswell. And if you don't know anything about Roswell, it's basically an alien-themed town. They've really embraced this alien theme. Back in 1947, a, a man, I think on a ranch, a farmer, found a weird object on his land, and uh, he claims that it was probably a UFO. Now it's like this big thing where Roswell is a town where UFOs crash. But when I was looking for things to do on my route from California to Florida, Roswell kind of just popped up on the way and um, it was pet friendly too. So a lot of their museums are all dog friendly. So I could bring in Kuma with me. So I thought that was great. In 800 feet, your destination will be on the right. All right, Kuma, you ready to check out some aliens? the museum and I'm parked just right there on the street super close they're very lenient on street parking here okay so this is the research center I feel like I'm not allowed to be in here or something and they actually all have folders in them with like some info and like articles and stuff okay Kuma you ready to go to the next point Kuma's really enjoying this They have alien feet leading to the spacewalk over there. It's just around the corner from the museum. Ready? house or something. So I'm not gonna lie, I actually enjoyed that spacewalk. <laughs> Chip and Joanna Gaines has created in that city, but the place 
that they open in Waco is called the Silos. So that's what I'm gonna be checking out. The Silos is all pet friendly, except for the coffee shop and the eateries, like the bakery. But everything else, I could take her into the shops and stuff. So that was another selling point for me to stop by Waco was to um, take Kuma with me. I saw this sign earlier that said that um, there was a Billy the Kid Museum in Heiko, Texas. And I'm like, where is Heiko, Texas? And apparently I was passing through, right now I am passing through Heiko, Texas, and I saw this Billy the Kid statue. So I don't know why Billy the Kid is known in Heiko, Texas, but I need to find out why. And it's a cute little town. It's like a Western themed town. It looked like there were some cool shops there. I'm not exactly sure what there is to do there, but I'm gonna look into it for sure. I would have been in Waco, Texas by now, but uh, got stopped in this construction zone where they're only making it one lane. So they're stopping a whole bunch of cars, letting the other lane go, and then doing the same for the other. Waco is a little bit bigger than I thought. I'm sure it grew because of shipping book Joanna Gaines. The hotel I'm staying at, La Quinta Inn, is only a half a mile to the silos, so I wonder if I'll pass by it. There's lots of uh, good fast food places around there. There's um, in and out Out of all the places, Waco, Texas has in and out Burger, and there's a Water Burger as well. Must be the up there. Your destination is on the right. What do you think? So this room, I just got a king size because I think it was cheaper. You gonna rub on that carpet? I knew it. It's Kuma's favorite thing to do is rub herself on the carpet. But I do like this room. It's, um, Really nice and modern. I like their uh, backdrop here. Here it is, Magnolia Table. It's already busy. Hmm. Coffee's good. So this is what I got, the pancake breakfast. Things are good. So I went to have breakfast by myself with Alkuma because she can't eat indoors and it's a little cold today to eat outdoors. So did that real quick this morning, and now I'm heading to Magnolia Market at the Silos with Kuma, because it's dog friendly there. So this is it. They open at nine, so they just open. It's very quiet, but here I am at the Silos. They have six shops, bath and body, bags and jewelry, women's clothing, kids and baby, men's provisions, books and paper. So these are all the shops right here. So cute. Oh, and this is the, the church that they renovated. So we got the shops at Silos, Magnolia Press, Magnolia Home, Silos Baking Co, and Magnolia Market. And over on that side is the silos that you see. Going to Magnolia now. Lots of cool things everywhere. All these pillows are great. I 
love them. Oh my, I might have to get this. I love this pillow. There's Joanna. So I checked out the other side where the silos are and saw the garden and the Magnolia uh, furnishing store where there's lots of home decor stuff. And now I am back at the church and the little retail shops. Yeah, I did a little bit of shopping. I got this rose quartz facial roller. I've been wanting to get one of these for a while. Just like roll this on your face. Hmm, that's pretty good actually. And I got this little dainty heart ring. It's so cute. And I'm also thinking about getting a couple of accent pillows from my couch. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go back and get those pillows too. So I am done at the silos. I did end up getting those pillows. I mean, look how awesome they are. All that texture and my oatmeal color that I love. So I spent like half a day there, right when I opened at nine and now it's almost two. So I spent five hours at this place. I mean, it is humongous. I knew it was kind of big, but I didn't know it was this big. So I am pretty tired. So if I'm tired, I know Kuma's tired. How are you doing? Are you tired? I'm pretty tired. You did a good job. Great job walking along with me. Proud of you. way to New Orleans today. I've actually been driving for a while already. Uh, I left really early because I woke up stupid early today. Um, woke up around 3 a.m. but I did wait, go to sleep early last night too. I went to bed probably around 8 30 so I still got about six and a half hours of sleep. So yeah I left when it was really dark and I have to say it was a little bit scary driving in the dark on the highway because usually when I go on these solo cross-country road trips I pretty much stay on course with I-10, Interstate 10, but this time since I took some different stops um, it's way off the interstate um, so I took a lot of highways and going from Waco, Texas to New Orleans, you have to take the highway for miles and miles before you take the interstate again. But I did want to leave early today because I wanted to arrive in New Orleans before uh, heavy traffic started. And because I am a little bit scared to drive in New Orleans too when I arrive since I am staying in a tourist area near the French, well pretty much in the French Quarter. So um, yeah, a bit nervous about driving in New Orleans. I've never done it. I've never drawn it. I've never drove in New Orleans. So I hope I could do it. <laughs> I'm sure I can. It'll just make me nervous. So yeah, in New Orleans, I'm staying at the Hotel Monteleon. It's in French Quarter. It's a historic hotel. Uh, has lots of history and it's actually a haunted hotel too. I don't know if I really believe in ghosts. I just like the fact that it's haunted and that there's like a story to it. It is a pet friendly hotel, but the pet fee is pretty expensive here. It's the most expensive pet fee that I've paid uh, on this road trip or any road trip I've taken, but I just wanted to splurge a little bit uh, for me and Kuma because it was within walking distance to a lot of the locations I wanted to go to. The big Izzy. Quarter mile. Continue on to Boyka Street. Oof, what are we doing here? Go straight. Looks like it. All right, I'm in the downtown area now. A little nervous, but called my friend Kathy and she said it wasn't that bad. It's actually really nice weather. It's 68 degrees. Very warm compared to the weather I've been in. Well, Waco was okay. The mornings were really cold in the 30s, but the afternoons are pretty nice. I'm happy to be back in the warmth. <laughs> 
Welcome to New Orleans. Three quarters of a mile. So far, not too bad. Driving here, almost to there. Here's Bienville. There it is. Hotel Monteleon. Your destination is on the left. I am all checked in to the Hotel Monteleon. I booked this hotel because it's very close to a lot of the spots that I wanted to check out with my dog, like Cafe Dumont. Lots of galleries, little stores, uh, all within a half a mile from here. And there's Miss Kuma enjoying the bed. She was already sleeping on it, right? But the bed looks very comfy. This is a standard king room. Cafe Emily. Oh, look at this. It's so beautiful. So Kuma is just below me under the chair. She's very tired. She did a lot of walking. Um, but as soon as we walked in, they gave her a nice uh, dog bowl full of water. We got the chicken and waffles. It looks really good. I think that's like uh, some kind of mushroom gravy on top. Just got done with Cafe Emily and it was really great food. So next, I am going to Cafe Dumont for some dessert with, for those famous beignets. I haven't had these in so long. They always put so much powdered sugar. It's good. All right. I think I'm all full now with food, so I'm gonna walk it off and explore some galleries, maybe a voodoo shop, some other things we can do with Kuma. We're gonna go to Southern Paws, which is a pet boutique and bakery. Oh, sure. Kuma, did you hear that? You're gonna get a treat. Oh my goodness, there it is. Thank you. Can I get the Starbucks cookie? And one of these party bones. That little one, yep, that one. <laughs> There's a couple more places I want to check out in New Orleans, and that's Waldenburg Park and Voodoo Authentica. Wow, oh, that's beautiful. So yeah, this is the Riverwalk area. Get a nice sunset view with the bridge. One last stop, Voodoo Authentica right here. Just kind of curious, you know, voodoo is a New Orleans thing, so I want to check this out. Oh. This is for attraction and love. I think I need this. Traveling juju. To be your constant driving buddy and travel companion. This is kind of like the good luck charms at the temples, I guess. All right, so now it's the end of the day and Kuma's going crazy. She does this thing where she rubs herself in the carpet when she's pretty tired. But yeah, we both had a great time exploring New Orleans. It was fun, like checking out all the things that I never checked out before. Cause I've been to New Orleans so many times, but today I felt like I explored the different things that I usually don't check out. final day of driving, I am finally heading home to Florida. Initially, I wanted to stop by Pensacola, Florida before I headed home, but when I looked at the weather forecast, actually one of my friends told me about the weather forecast that it was gonna be horrible and thunderstorming. So I was like, well, that's not great. <laughs> I wouldn't really be able to do all the stuff I wanted to because I wanted to hang out somewhere outside with Kuma um you know maybe at like a eatery and then later on maybe hit up downtown do some bar hopping with some friends but 
that wasn't going to work out with all this rain. So I had to change plans and tell my friends that, sorry, you know, I'm not going to stop by after all because the weather is terrible. Uh, so I'm just going to head straight home. But, you know, they all understood and it wouldn't have been great for them either for them, for all of them to come out in the rain. So everybody can stay home and be safe because it sounded like the weather was going to be really bad. So yeah, I left super early this morning at 4.30 a.m. So I could arrive in Tampa, uh, but where there was still sunlight. It takes about nine and a half hours from New Orleans to Tampa, Florida. Um, and I'm making really good time right now. I only have about five more hours left. But yeah, on the way, we stopped by Bucky's. Uh, I knew it was coming up in Alabama, so I got some coffee there, took a bathroom break, and also took Kuma out, and she had a good time running around in the grass. Uh, I think she was happy to see grass again because New Orleans had no grass whatsoever, um, you know, unless you walked four, four or five blocks out of French Quarter, and it's a long time for her to hold it in. by Busy Bees now, uh, which is one of my favorite gas stations in Florida. They have lots of gas pumps, um, they have a huge uh, restroom and clean restrooms, and they have a separate uh, pet relief area with grass for the dogs. So if you're going on I-10, it's on exit 283. Okay, so here it is, Busy Bees. Wow, it's very busy. <laughs> So yeah, you'll see to the right here, that's a, a pet relief area with lots of grass. Okay, I see an open spot there. Okie dokie, baby. Ready to go relief yourself. So yes, this is their pet relief area. Lots of grass, a pet waste station, and a happy camper. So now I'm gonna use the restroom real quick. I keep my car in the shade so that she doesn't get too hot. almost home. I am almost in Tampa. What an incredible trip this was. I really enjoyed my solo cross-country road trip with my dog Kuma. I think out of all the cross-country solo road trips that I've done, this was probably my favorite uh, because I stopped by several stops and usually I just, you know, zip through all the cities, stay overnight and just keep on going. But this time I took it a little bit slower and stopped by a few sites, checked it out and enjoyed all the spots that I stopped by really. They were all, you know, unique to itself. Very interesting, I learned a lot. So yeah, if you're looking to take a solo cross country road trip, I highly recommend stopping by some sites. It'll make the drive go by so much faster. Um, even though you're taking longer, it's like it take, taking those breaks is a really good idea so that it doesn't feel too monotonous. But yeah, if you followed me along on this entire journey, thank you so much for following me along. I do hope you take a solo cross country road trip as well. And if you're traveling with your dog, visit some dog friendly places. So yeah, if it was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna watch more of our videos, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.